Hi guys, this is the painting we are going to do today, a beautiful white horse in the snow. This is a good lesson to learn how to paint white. As you can see, the horse looks really white, but then you can see all the shadows. They have to have darks against lights and in order to bring out white you have to have shadows so all you need for this painting is red give me cad red cad yellow burnt sienna ultramarine blue black and white and the brushes you need are the bristol one inch or a half inch bristle brush and a liner brush and you'll need chisel, chiseled edge chiseled edge synthetic brush and I'm using this was done on a media paper, mixed media, and um, I do that. I use these for practice so I can practice my painting. And then I use this canvas here as a stretch canvas and it's pre-primed so I don't have to use gesso. And I like these because I can hang them up on the wall, see? So I taped it off with painter's tape a little uh, under halfway and I am going to start with the sky. So we'll start with the sky first and we'll leave the trees out until we get the horse on there. So we'll do the sky first and the snow and then we will um, start then with the, the horse. So I'm going to take my chiseled edge brush, my synthetic brush, you can use, depending on the size of your canvas, you can use a bigger one. This one's an inch, but uh, you can use a smaller chisel edge. And you're going to pick up, now if you don't have burnt sienna, just use brown and add a little bit of red and yellow to it. Um, as long as the sky got kind of a, a beige color to it. Just for the colors that go together in the painting. So I'm going to add burnt sienna and lots of white. I want to have a nice, see, I want, to, I want the sky to be nice and light. We'll try that first. It's a pretty color. So a light brown with a little bit of reddish. You can see it kind of looks reddish, doesn't it? And I'm going to pick up more white. So I want it to be light in some spots. Just go back and forth. Good. So I'm going to pick up my burnt sienna again. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of blue to it to give it a kind of a grayish look. Because I want a little bit of shadow in the sky too, but not too much. Blue will help gray it up. So gray, blue and brown will give it a grayish tone. And there we go. Just mix up some colors using using those colors that I just mentioned. See how you're getting that little bit of a grayish tone in there? See? And then we'll come down here. Trees are going down here, so that's okay. You can just put your colors on. We're working wet on wet. Make sure your paint is all wet, even if, it, if you have to use blending gel or you can mist it with some water to keep it moist. So I'm going to pick up some white. So I got lots of darker color on there, but like I said, trees are going back here, so it's not too bad. See, that's quick. It didn't take us very long to do that sky. Beautiful. 
it's a pretty sky isn't it now we'll take our tape off and we will take some blue same brush same brush and make sure your brush is clean or go get another one okay for this part I don't want to brown into the snow right now so I'm using ultramarine blue and white I'm not going to worry about mixing it too much this is a shadow for this snow so put that on there just put it on easy see if you don't mix it here you get some lights and darks isn't that nice pick up some white get up underneath your see what the chisel edge you can get underneath your horizon line now it doesn't matter if you make it a little crooked or whatever because trees will go there and the horse is going in the middle so we want to be too dark here because then you'll have to deal with the if it's too dark then you'll have to deal with the snow coming through the horse and then you have to do several coats instead of one or two so we'll keep that a bit light there in the center let's see how nice that is already keep that lighter right there now as you go down you add more blue and more white see i'm not mixing it very much but it'll come off try to keep that center a little bit lighter some more blue you're coming down here so you want that a little bit dark down here so we don't mix your white and your blue together to make one color it'll give you all kinds of different values of blue on your canvas there we go so we'll be putting on some more highlights in the snow main thing is to get the horse on there and then we'll deal with the rest of it but this is easier if you try to work around a horse it might be a little hard for you but the trees won't be too bad so now we get that much done so as you can see the snow is going to have highlights and shadows so I have my pattern here of the horse and I'll get you the pattern for you and that way you don't have to learn how to draw probably taking many hours to try and you could use a grid or you could just draw draw it freehand if you want um, it would just take you longer that's all and um, then I use carbon paper carbon paper put I taped on the horse on the canvas and I put my carbon paper underneath and I used a pen to trace out the outline of the horse and then I got this nice shape so I don't have to worry about shape so I take the tape off and there we go you can see the outline and don't worry about the lines you can paint over those with your paint so I like to start with the eyes I'm going to use wherever the black is that's where I'm going to put my black paint and that's where I'm going to start and I'm using a small it's a liner brush you can use the long one I showed you or you can get a smaller one a shorter one and you're going to pick up some black pick up some black on your brush and then just paint that in make sure it's not too much paint on your brush yet because it might uh, turn into a big old blob so just be careful and 
this one eye. And then there's a little bit of black over here on that eyelash sticking out. Just a little dab. And then we'll do the nostrils. This way we can figure out, you know, if the shape of the face is good. We need to make any adjustments or anything. Kind of goes up a little bit and down around here. I'll send you the, the reference photo. That way you could have a, a close look at the shapes. It's a reference photo I got from Pixabay actually. I'm falling in love with Pixabay. They also have um, the people who give the photos so you can use them for free. They have a thing there in, in, up in the corner and it shows it says coffee and um, you can make a donation there. So what I'm going to do is every time I use a, a photo I'm going to donate a little bit of money just to put towards their efforts of putting up all these beautiful pictures for us to use for free. So you also have a little bit dark down around here on the very bottom of the chin. Now you can always make adjustments if you need them. I'm going to put a little bit of dark around here so I can see the shapes. If I have to adjust them later, I will. So you can see the shape. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a gray color. A little bit of blue. Bit of blue. We can use black and white and blue or you can use burnt sienna and blue we'll make gray. It's a nice gray color you get from burnt sienna or burnt umber and blue. Add white. So black and white will work. We add a little bit of blue too. It won't be too uh, blackish looking. There we go. Uh, that should do. So we'll do the horse in the gray colors first and then we will put on the highlights to bring out the shading and the shapes after. So it's the here there. And because you're putting on a dark underpainting of the shadows, it will cover up that snow. If you were doing just white, that, that would come through and you'd need a dozen different coats of white. So I'm just going to put the shadows on first. This is the easiest way I can think of doing it for you. I'm always trying to make the paintings as easy as I can for you because you can't have any fun when you're struggling trying to figure things out. This way you can have some fun no matter what way it turns out. At least you're enjoying it. And you learn as you go. Then you come up with your own techniques. Whatever works for you. But this is a good starter. Just picking up more paint. I'm using my synthetic brush. It's a bit smaller than the one I had before. So like I say, it depends on what you're painting. It's okay for it to be lighter or darker. It doesn't matter as long as it's a grayish tone. And uh, as long as the shadows are there. Try to get around that line. Use your lines. You don't need your lines for the shape. All right. So the shape is what you're trying to get. Now these shadows will help you your shape first because you keep if you try to put on your highlights and 
it'll be harder to get the shape. So this is the easiest way to get the shape of the horse. Like putting in the eyes and the nose and the mouth help get the shape of the face. And the chiseled edge brush is good for going up against the lines. Right up against the line so you can get rid of those lines. We'll do that as we go along. Now, we'll also do that's the hair part there, so you don't need to do nothing with that yet. Don't need to do anything with that. Up a small bit. So adjust your colors if you have to because you're going to be going back and forth with the colors. You're going to be mixing them probably several times. But don't worry about and get don't worry about getting them too exact because we're going to be going over that with highlights and things. So try not to worry too much about get them exactly, but try to get the, the colors the background a little dark. So you can always adjust those after too. Right now we're just trying to get that shape of the horse. Let's see, that horse has a just trying to get my paint a little darker so that we can have a shadow there. If the shadow's not dark enough, we can always darken it. Might need a smaller brush, so you can switch brushes. When you feel that you can't get any more, I'm going to leave a little space here just so I know where the face ends. Okay. I'm going to need a smaller brush when I get down there. Using my chiseled edge to get around that corner there. switch to a smaller brush just so I can get around this part here. So always have your brushes handy so you can just pick it up and not have to search for it. Don't lose my nostril. There we go. See how the face looks a little different than the bottom part, but that's okay. Just get your shadows on there. Don't worry too much. And now we'll do the back. The little line that we made up here, that's where you're going to do a white highlight. So just skip over that line. Don't worry too much right now, as long as you leave a little space there so you know where that goes. The highlight. Put the shadow up here. And fill it in. So much easier when you do it this way. Just get all the basic color on first. Always look for the darkest color first, and then you can put that on. Then you can do all the highlights on top of that and get all the shapes for anything, anything that you're painting. If you're doing a tree, put on your darkest color first. Look at the tree and see how dark it is. It might be almost black. Then you can put that on first and then you put on your highlights on top of that to bring to shape up your tree. And you could use the three value method that I have. Uh, 
dark, medium, and light values. Three values. If you remember the three values, dark, medium, and light, if you do those and let the dark sh show through in spots and the medium show through in the when you put on the lightest value, so that way when you get that done and, and you'll see some shapes and you can still add a few more some more highlights on top of that. I think I have some videos. I do have some videos on that. How to paint a tree, three easy steps to painting a mountain. Um, and that'll show you the three step method that I use. Three steps to uh, I'll leave a little space there so I can see where that goes. And uh, three steps to a, a waterfall. So I got lots of videos out there. Lots and lots. All right, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to adjust that here after. So I'll just go in here. Now I left, I went over that line while I was trying to do that. So just have to remember, I'm going to put a bit of paint there so I can see where that went. I really don't want to lose that line because then I'll lose the shape of the horse. I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm going to smooth that out. But I'll have that nice line there. A little bit dark there. So when you're doing your shading, just leave a little dark there. So, so, so you can see where the shapes go. So once you lose the shape, then you're, you'll spend your whole day then trying to shape up your horse. All right. Smooth it out. And the horse is coming alive. Cool. I'm going to use my small brush again for the ears. So I'm going to take some the gray color just put on the body and I'm going to add some to the ear. Now leave some outside, just make a shape here. It's all just like that. Leave the outside so we can put some weight on that. And uh, let's see, let's see. Maybe some burnt sienna. Whatever colors you see in the reference photo, you can go by that too. All right. That much done, and I'm going to pick up my grayish tones, and I'm going to outline it here. Outline the ear. See how you're going over those lines now, which is good. Just try to keep the shape. daisies. Now for the here, it's uh, kind of an orangey, yellowy, reddish color. <laughs> but we're going to do a base color first, okay? And then we'll worry about, we'll put the highlights on after. So I'm going to take some, let me see, let me see. It's like the background color almost, but we don't want it to blend too much with the background. So we'll Put on some burnt sienna. Now you can use orange, maybe a little bit of yellow, and so I'm using my chiseled edge brush and white, and a little bit of let's see, let's see, maybe that'll do, maybe that'll do. So just um, experiment with the colors. Okay, see that's not dark enough, so I have to add more. I'm gonna add a little bit of red more burnt sienna. Let's see if I can darken it up a bit. Not bad. Need a little bit more yellow. You'll have to experiment with your colors on this uh, on the hair. But we don't worry about the highlights right now. Just get something on there so you can see where the hair is, okay? The, this is the main thing we're doing right now is getting the shapes and where everything goes. And doing it this way you don't have to worry about putting on your highlight jet or you only have to worry about one thing. You don't have to worry about a dozen things at one time. Okay. Worry about one thing at a time. Now we're down to here. So I picked up some of the... I should let that dry first. Let that dry. 
Then you can do your hair down. Just using the chiseled edge brush. I might need to move now to a smaller brush because it's, once it starts getting hard to get into the corners now you're better off changing brushes. There we go. I'm just going to get that on there. Get it on whatever way you can. All right, we'll we'll make that all nice and stringy and this here will be all pulled out. We'll do that after. Don't worry about that right now. I'm going to go to a smaller brush right now. That that little tiny one again little tiny round one if you have one if you don't use a smaller chiseled edge brush and just put that on there like that see don't worry about what it looks like right now just the shapes are the most important thing right now okay the shapes is everything Now, look at that. Good work, guys. See? Now, while we get that color out, let's keep it going on the bottom of the tail there. There's a tail down here somewhere, hiding down here. So we'll just put that color in here. Just use a small round brush or a small chiseled edge synthetic brush. All right, just get it in there. It doesn't matter. Good. And it's a little bit coming out here. There we go. That's all you need for now. Now let all that dry first and then we'll put the highlights on. Now let's start putting on the highlights and it seems that most of the light is on the right. The right side of the horse. See? So, let's try that. I'm just going to use my synthetic brush and I'm going to get some white and my chiseled edge. Nice clean brush. And I'm going to put white right here. Get that much done and I'm going to I'm not going to reload I'm just going to keep my paintbrush I have whatever whatever I have on there now I'm going to get some white over here now because the paint is dry we have to get a blending technique See some of the grays coming through, that's good. Down the side. Down the leg. Okay. I'm going to take a Q-tip and just move that around a little bit up here. Try to catch it before it dries. If you don't have a Q-tip, a small bit of tissue around your finger would, would help. I'm still going to leave my brush with that little bit of paint on there. I'm not going to put too much on there yet. I just want to get the highlights established. So kind of like almost like a dry brushing technique. It's going over to the edge here because I left out that little bit there. 
I'm going to come down where I see the, sh the highlight and come down around here. Just using the chiseled edge. Trying not to pick up too much weight yet. Very little paint on my brush. That way it will all blend nicely. It's almost like grey, isn't it? That's okay. So you can see it's starting to come alive. Now we'll pick up a little more paint, white. Not too much. Just a little is better than too much because you can always go back and put more on, but if you put too much on, it's hard then to adjust it. So I'm just going to put more on here. Down around the body. Put a couple of layers on and that will help bring it out more. But a little bit at a time. That will be the easiest way to do that. Much easier to do it that way. A little bit more paint. Not much. Blending it all together. And just scrubbing it in. A little bit of pressure. I wanted a little tiny bit more dark down here because that's more of a shadow area down here. So most of the white will be all up around here. It's just coming along. It's coming along. A little bit more white on the very tip of my brush. And let this go whiter again. See how many layers I'm doing? And that way, look, see how it all blends nicely? Because I'm using very little paint. And I'm using layers. Nice. Now let's try a little bit on this side. A little bit of paint. Less is better. Get this spot here. Just going to come around the edge here now. Good. I'm going to pick up my toothpick. A <laughs> toothpick. That don't look like a toothpick to me. All right, so let's just grab the edge of that there. Move it around a little bit. Soften it up, my Q-tip. Just softening up the edge is what I'm doing. Good. Nice and bright, isn't it? I like that. For in here, I might need a smaller brush. I'm going to try this little bit here just to get it get it on there. I'm trying to establish where the lights are going. There we go. Take my Q-tip and soften it out a little bit. See how that softens it up nicely? Now, yeah. it's also a bit of highlight here. We'll leave a shadow between those two, so we're going to have to pick around here, I think. All right, good. And also this side of the face. I might need a little bit more paint. Very little. So we will get this part here. Start on the edge. All right. There's a little bit here. I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. Yep, 
you might need a couple of q-tips for this because you can see the q-tip starts to wear down a little bit yeah you can see the lights is nice isn't it I want another get another layer over here because this needs to be so I'm just going to start on the edge the body Pull it up. Coming out nicely. I reload, but very, very little. You can use your Q-tip your Q-tip anytime you feel like you need it. Get rid of that line that was there. Now it's coming along. Now we have some white down here. So let's try that. Clean it up a bit with your toothpick. Now, I just added a bit of water to my I, with your. Uh, so I, I dampened my Q-tip, a little bit of water. Okay, that way I can keep it in shape, and it'll help spread the paint a bit better. So. It wiped it out a little bit there, but that's okay. A little more. Paint on my Q-tip. I'm just experimenting, guys. This is something new for me, too. So I just thought this might, it might help. It might work. Who knows? We'll find out. Painting with a Q-tip. Huh. I'll do a video called Painting with a Q-tip. Very cute. So that looks good. Look with a Q-tip. Cool. We got the shadow here. And I'll take my Q-tip and dip it into a bit of white. And I'm just, I'm just experimenting. Just watch. Let's see if it doesn't work, we won't do it. Okay. So we got that, and you can have a couple of Q-tips, some dry ones and some a little damp, and then we can spread that out a little bit. So it softens up the edges there for you. That softens up the edges nicely. You can even move it around a little bit just to uh, really soften up those edges. That came out pretty nice, actually. I'm going to do the same thing with the... Um, I'm just picking up a little tiny bit of white on my Q-tip. Now, you can use a brush. I'm just uh, experimenting here, and it seems to be working out pretty nice. I'm going to try this here. Try, try. See, when you use too much, if you don't use too much water because it'll wipe the paint away. So try the dry technique. Try the dry Q-tip first. And then, there we go. I'm going to turn it over with no paint on it. I'm going to spread it out. See how nicely it blends the edges though? So, let's see if we can use the Q-tip on here to soften up those edges. Let's 
make a little more paint. Very, very little. Like I say, you don't have to use a Q-tip, you can use a brush. I am finding that the Q-tip is giving me some really nice uh, s s blending and smoothing out the edges nicely. Good way to experiment, isn't it? Right on a video. Not knowing what's going to happen. It's okay. If we make a mistake, we can fix it. See how blending out that edge nicely there. This this one here is a little damp. Nice. Now that's nice, isn't it? Hmm. Nicely. Lighten this up a bit. Too much paint. See what happens. Be careful. Still getting some really nice blending. Smoothing out those edges looks really nice. Now, the face. I'm trying my dry toothpick. I keep calling it a toothpick, so I don't want to confuse you, alright? It's a Q tip. It's a Q tip. Lots of light on this side. And then we'll just move it around and towards here. Move that down here a little bit, just to soften up that edge. Good. Now I'm going to go back to my brush. So go back and forth, see what works good for you. I'm going to pick up a chiseled edge. I'm going to pick up some white. Let's see if I can establish this. This is the hardest part of the face. Yeah, the face is the hardest. We'll just take our time using the chiseled edge to soften up that there, leaving a little bit of shadow. I'll bring a little bit down here. Good. Might do a little bit on the side of the face here. Gotta get the get the shape proper. Keep that eye. We don't want to lose the eye. We'll probably fill that in again after. It's coming along, coming along. Looks nice. So I think I'm going to call it finished. It's very pretty. And I think um, you can add some more highlights if you want to brighten it up even more. But I like it the way it is. I'm happy with it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments, you know, what you thought of this video and, you know, what part you like the best and how you made out with your horse. And I'd love to see your paintings. And you got my email address, Alison Pryor, yahoo.com. And I'd love to hear from you and let me know how you think this painting is it too hard or is it too advanced or did I make it easy enough for you to be able to follow along. So I hope I did. And um, we will do another beautiful painting in our next upcoming videos. And uh, my Patreons out there, I'm going to be sending you the link to the full painting, have your early access. And this will be coming up sometime in March. And this is now February. So depending on when you're looking at this video, you might it might already be up or you, you might have to wait or just email me, let me know. Um, let me know 
if you want to to know when it's coming up the exact dates and i'll uh, let you know and that's about it for now so i'm gonna let you go don't forget to give me a like leave some comments and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video happy painting everybody bye <laughs>